Eagles general manager Howie Roseman revealed the Birds' strategy for drafting players. Who does that put at the top of Philly's list? And Georgia standout Nolan Smith says the reunion with N'Kobe Dean and Jordan Davis would be perfect. Plus, what other Georgia defensive lineman seems to be in free fall? Could he be available at 10? And would the Eagles even want him? But first, let's run it. Josh Davis here and happy Thursday. I want to thank everyone so much. We just passed 1,700 subscribers. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already trying to get to 2,000. Please make sure to do that. The New Heights podcast with Jason and Travis Kelsey dropped yesterday. And if you didn't catch it, it was really fascinating, especially the part because it covers the interview that Jason Kelsey had with Howie Roseman at the NFL Combine. And the, the content there is fantastic. The thing that I love the most, and you have to check this out, is how he goes into his strategy for drafting players, for building a team, and what is the most important aspect? I don't think what we did in 17 was the same thing we did in 2022. Okay. And I don't think, like, um, like someone asked me yesterday, like, are you worried about teams copying your strategy? And for me, it's like, it, it reminds me of the Seahawks defense in the 2010, 11, 12, 13, right? They were running cover three and they had all these long press corners mm -hmm. and all their defense coordinators were getting head coaching jobs. Yeah. And when you look at like Richard Sherman, take Richard Sherman, they drafted yeah. him in the fifth round, right. right? So they were drafting guys that people like me were looking at and going, this guy's 6'2", 210, he can't change direction, you know, he's, he's not fluid enough to stay with receivers in man coverage, and those guys are running four fives. Yeah. The Josh Norman types, the Richard Sherman types, yeah. and they're taking them in the fifth round, and those guys are playing well, especially in that scheme. Right. Well, once they started getting coaches from that scheme, you know, I'm thinking about Gus and um, there's, there's guys. Yeah, that whole cover of, three Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, they had a bunch of head coaches. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, guys are taking those same players in the first and second round, lost your competitive advantage. And so for me, gotcha. it's like the minute that you got to figure out, and I'm not saying we do this, but you got to figure out like where where, where the league's it, going. It, almost like you got to get in front of it. You got to take a chance and say, all right, if I'm doing the same thing everything everyone's going to do, I'm probably losing any competitive advantage, right? Sure. Those guys are going. I mean, it's like undersized. I mean, really, I, I'm not saying this because I'm going to show you, you changed how people looked at, at centers and interior right. offense alignment. Yeah. People started saying like, I understand leverage better because mm -hmm. of you. I understand space play because of you and how what you can do for your offense. And so for th those guys, I mean, you saw like in last year's draft, like an undersized center went in the first round. In the first round, we right. drafted Cam in the second round. Like both those guys go high. And that was before, when I was first coming, like nobody drafted an undersized guy. No, you wouldn't and do it. At center in front of round like four. No doubt. Well, I guess maybe Ryan Khalil might be one example, but. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. so I think it changed that. And so at the end of the day, it's the same thing. Like we did it when we were with Coach Reed. Those edge guys, like the Trent Coles, they were 250 pounds. Like nobody wanted those guys. Everyone wanted 275 pound guys. And then teams started to win like that. And you had Doomerville and you had really the Colts and Freeney. Yeah. And teams were sort of like, no, I can take these guys in the first round because they're mm -hmm. explosive, they're dynamic. They play so low to the ground, it's actually hard to block those it guys. Is. Yeah. And you lost kind of that advantage of knowing I could take these guys in the third, fourth, and fifth round because people are going to go, these guys are too small. And so what, what we got to figure out is like, all right, like, you know, we're going to try to play Jalen, no doubt about it. Yeah. Like, want to pay Jalen. Sure. And so it's not going to be the same where we can just pluck free agents and, and grab those guys and pay them. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean we can't be really good. Right. But we got to just change and get out ahead of it and go, all right, like, where where can we actually really improve the team at yeah. positions that really matter to us without kind of being in this sense where we're freaking we're, we're, we got 20 teams on the same guys. Howie is talking about the competitive advantage. And yes, while he says that he's not giving away any secrets and he's not really saying exactly what the strategy is, I do think that it's telling and we're, we should probably expect that something maybe unexpected or a little bit shocking is going to occur in this next NFL draft because, as Howie mentions there, the teams that win, and if you go back and look at history of what Howie's talking about, the teams that are at the very top of the league are the ones that are the trendsetters. They're not the, it is a copycat league, I'll give you that, but it's the teams that are not afraid to go out and make a big signing or a big draft pick that's kind of against the grain and someone's going, eh, I don't know that that's really a great pick, but then you see it turn out. Now, you could still make the case too on the flip side of the argument that 
a lot of times it doesn't work out and you're all of a sudden in not a great place. And if you listen to the entire show, go watch the entire show. I very much encourage it. I got it in the link of the description, but how he talks about that. And he said, yeah, you know what? We've missed on some of those, but the ability to rebound and jump forward and kind of be able to take, take the league by storm, the risk and reward is worth it. And so he says in, in the interview, the further interview with Jason Kelsey there is, Hey, you know what? Maybe we should consider to do this. So thumbs up for Howie. I love the fact that he's always looking ahead, future trend setting and everything there, but I cannot wait for this draft. I think we're in for a lot of great things. Wanted to also bring up real quickly too, because from that interview, if you didn't catch it, um, Jason Kelsey had asked him just the question of, of being in Philly and what's it like to, uh, have, have that type of sports culture, those expectations and everything else. And, and I thought it was awesome. I mean, this was a side of Howie that we don't often see, but to be able to get an, an extra behind the scenes look at how your general manager thinks and what makes him tick is really, really cool. And so he said here, I got this quote, I know when I mess up a draft pick, there's no doubt about it. I know when I make a bad move. And so you re- you get reminded about it. And it's just like, I got to make up for this fivefold in quote. And I get there's quotes throughout this entire interview. But again, I think it speaks to how, how he resonates with the Philly vibe, the, the fans, the culture, how we hold him accountable. He even, he even mentioned that he said, Hey, you Philly fans are the best. You're the ones who keep the high level of expectations, that sense of urgency, the dynamic changes that we have to make. Because he said, you know what? We don't have 10, 15 years, like some organizations, unfortunately, that can't get over the hump or can just barely limp into the playoffs. So he knows that it's that winning mentality, that Philly way of doing things. And again, I love hearing it, love seeing it, um, and, and cannot wait, like I say, for the draft. Speaking of Howie Roseman and making moves, the Eagles signed, according to Adam Schefter here, you see the tweet, but signed former Saints defensive tackle Cantavia Street. Per sources, Street racked up six sacks for the Saints last season on the 518 snaps he played. Street now joins safety Justin Evans as the second free agent this offseason to go from New Orleans to Philadelphia. There's been some reports too. Some people were saying three and a half sacks. That's what I saw. Um, someone also mentioned that Pro Football Focus, I think, gave Cantavius uh, credit for six sacks. So, you know, three and a half, six sacks, pretty big difference there. Overall, this is not a guy that you're signing to become a starter. It's just a depth play. So I think it's good. I think it's a good signing. You know, we'll take it. You never can have too many defensive tackles. And the fact that he's a, a player that still has a lot of miles on the tread, so to speak, and that you could possibly get some plays here and there, I think it'll be a good signing. Now, from what the reports that I've seen, also doing some uh, some quick reading, it appears that he's a much better pass rusher than a run defender, and he's been a liability, according to reports and other uh, articles. There is definitely some weakness in the run game, but I don't think that's bad because, again, you can bring him in as a specialist and on obvious passing down situations. Sure, you know what? You slot him in there. He's the rotational play like we've seen from this defensive line, so I'm all for it. I think it's a good signing. The deal, uh, the, the at this time of the recording, uh, the actual numbers of the deal are not out, but I would imagine it'll be a very similar type as you've seen these other ones of signing for a very low risk, high reward type of player, not a lot of money keeping the cap space down. So thumbs up for that signing. Wanted to get into another area and obviously we're talking about the draft and is, is how he going to shock us or surprise us? But there was a Georgia player who had an official visit yesterday with the Eagles, uh, or I guess maybe two days and two days ago now, but Nolan Smith visited the Eagles. Uh, and, and we know how he's not, uh, been shy about this, but he likes Georgia players, obviously drafting guys like Nicobe Dean and Jordan Davis and others, but he, uh, they hosted a visit. And so Nolan Smith was asked, uh, in this interview, uh, and this article here is by, uh, the spun by sports illustrated, but they actually got to sit down with Nolan Smith. So if you take a look here, it says you got Nicobe Dean and Jordan Davis in Philadelphia. Have you talked to them about the possibility of you getting picked there? And Nolan Smith said, yes, I've talked to them about that. If I get picked with him and JD, it would be just a dream come true just to have the Georgia Georgia boys back together again, hanging out, kicking down the weekend, spending time together. It would be amazing. And then they went on to ask, so you've had quite a few meetings leading up to this year's draft process. And Nolan said, yes, I've been meeting with a whole bunch of teams. I just left a top 30 visit with the Eagles and it was just an amazing visit, meeting the coaches, talking to the GM, to the head coach, everyone. It just seems like an organization that's a perfect fit for me, end quote. I think that would be fantastic. I don't know if you're going to take him at 10. It seems like Nolan Smith is flying up the draft boards and in some mock drafts, we're starting to see that Nolan Smith may potentially go to the Eagles. And so I, I saw this most recently from DeBird's blog, but they did an Eagles only mock draft, a 6.0 version. So if you take a look at the article here, it says first round, 10th overall pick, Nolan Smith, edge out of Georgia. It says here, quote, plenty of people have already expressed their displeasure with the Eagles, potentially selecting Nolan Smith with the 10th overall pick. They question his pass rushing ability and lack of sack production, but using stats to predict success in the NFL isn't the best thing to do. If that were the case, Derek Barnett would be the greatest player of all time. 
Smith clearly has elite athleticism and his ability to read and react on the field is impressive. His bend around the edge could be the best in this year's draft class and he would flourish playing in Sean Desai's defensive front as a rookie, end quote. I've got the link in the description. Go through, look at the entire mock draft. I think it's fascinating how DeBird's blog actually pulls it out of, of what uh, you're looking at, the different options, the trades. Um, there's a graphic too that DeBird's blog had shared a couple days ago of Howie Roseman and what is he prioritizing in the draft. So you take a look at here at this graphic. It, it kind of says it all there. I mean, the, 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 the visual that you get is there's obviously a percentage of what Howie Roseman likes to do. It's draft defensive linemen. It's 24% of the time since 2016. And it's cool to see the different day one, day two, day three pick breakdowns. You know, where is Howie going to use the most draft capital early on versus late in the draft? So again, it begs the question, would the Eagles select Nolan Smith? And I think possibly you're not going to sit, you know, have a draft visit with someone that you don't think is a possibility that you're going to draft because then you only get 30 of those. You don't want to waste a pick on someone that you're saying, well, we're really never going to have a chance to draft this guy. So it'll be interesting to see. I think Nolan Smith could be a fascinating prospect and a target. The fact that you have Hassan Reddick though makes me a little bit question because there's already maybe a little bit of a lack of size. Yet you could also argue that Nolan Smith has had some injury issues. You know, is he going to be able to be durable? He is a smaller or slider edge rusher, but as DeBurr's blog points out in the article there and in his mock draft, that's a guy who has incredible bend, can very easily get around defenders, and he was great in, in run defense. I mean, he had some great numbers there. Obviously, there's a lot of other options, but let me know what you guys think. Is Nolan Smith someone that they should consider? If you're at 10, you're sitting there, you've got a couple other options. Who do you take? Is Nolan Smith someone that you'd be happy with? Let me know in the comments below. We're speaking about Georgia and Georgia pass rushers or defensive linemen. Is Georgia defensive lineman Jalen Carter. I know that name. If two or three months ago I told you, hey, Philly could get him at number 10, we'd all be through the roof. You'd be ecstatic. I would have been ecstatic. Now it's becoming to be more of a possibility that he may be available at 10, but I don't know if that's such a good thing. So here's what I mean. Take a look at this, and this article was shared by Dov Kleiman on Twitter, uh, but it says uh, Georgia defensive lineman Jalen Carter has been taken off NFL draft board, one team already named. And in the article here it says, quote, Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter has started to be taken off draft boards leading up to the 2023 draft by NFL teams due to his legal troubles. Carter was once considered a lock to be a top 10 or even a top five draft pick, but now his future in the NFL is in serious jeopardy. According to a source who spoke to the Athletics, Vic Tafur, the Las Vegas Raiders have crossed Carter off their board and will not take him with the seventh overall pick. Raiders head coach Josh McDaniels previously stated the team would do their homework on Carter, who has previously considered one of the top two or three players in the draft, but it seems that the team has decided to move from move on from end quote and the article goes on to just share how you know obviously his trouble stemmed from the legal accident uh the the uh, speeding and and the death of a, a teammate but we don't know everything behind the scenes and so this is where it becomes quite honestly very unfortunate for Jalen Carter possibly but also we're trying to figure out what's going on but I think this is very telling the fact that all of a sudden you're now saying a team is officially coming out and saying they're crossing him off the board now you could say hey maybe it's smoke and mirrors the Raiders want to throw everyone off the scent and hope that he falls to him at seven possibly but it's just not a great stance to make if you're going to say that and then all of a sudden come back and take a player he's not really going to be super happy with you yes he's going to want to be playing in the NFL but I think it more so suggests and, and Dan Campbell had spoken on it too yesterday you could make the case that maybe it was a good thing, maybe it was a bad thing, the way that he said interesting, because he was asked, you know, what, what do you think about it? And he's like, hey, we've got some other details that are coming out, and it's interesting. That's all that he would really say. So I think as this begins to go along, it's trending towards Jalen Carter could fall very far down the board. I'm not saying that would be outside of the, the first round, maybe. I, I don't know. You just never know about these instances. But anytime you're questioning someone's character, plus, if we remember correctly, back at his pro day, he did not show up in great shape, and he also didn't perform really well. So several different question marks leading up to the draft, never a great position to be in, but Given this info, are you still in on Jalen Carter? Let me know what you guys think. I want to know if he was available at 10. Do you take him? Or let's say, let's go back to Nolan Smith. If you have the choice between Nolan Smith or Jalen Carter at 10, right now, who do you choose? Let me know in the comments below. All right, quick announcement. want to let you guys know, uh, should hopefully be recording. I know we were going to try to do it this week, uh, but Joe Castro of the Philly Philly podcast, um, we're going to try to get together, maybe do like a mock draft, a little breakdown for guys that we should consider. So be on the lookout for that. Probably happen next week, I would imagine, but we'll let you know as soon as we have the official details on that. Appreciate you guys joining as always. Until next time, I'm Josh Davis, and this has been the Philly Special.